Good morning, Temple of Faith Bible Church. Good morning. Welcome, Kimberly Miles Cameron. Welcome, Uncle John. Welcome, Deborah. Welcome, Miss Janie. Welcome, Miss Louvenia. Live from Florida, Singer Island, where I dove yesterday, and I will be diving today at 1.30. Uh, the boat left at 8.30, but because I wanted to preach live, I scheduled my first ever afternoon dive at 1.30 so I could preach this morning. Good morning, uh, Deaconess Clayton. Good morning, Deacon Clayton. Welcome all of you this, this morning. Let's bow our heads. Father God, in the precious, priceless, matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we do come this morning asking that you would open our minds, open our hearts, open our spirits so that we may receive the very word of God today. Let us be moved, let us be motivated, and let us be about our Father's business. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Uh, great to talk to Uncle John yesterday. I took time out after my dive before the Georgia game to call him and uh, to let Uncle John know that he's in my prayers as his past along with his wife, Miss Louvenia. I ask all of you to pray for uh, Uncle John and Mrs. Jane and, and um her mother. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we speak healing in the Miles house. We speak good health in the Miles house. We speak the removal of stress in the Miles house. We speak sweet sleep and rest. We speak healing. We speak therapy. We speak love. We speak joy. We speak peace all throughout the Miles home this morning. We also lift up Germany as he prepares on Friday uh, to bury his brother in Southfield, Michigan. May they all, may he have traveling grace and all who would travel there have traveling grace as well. In the name of Jesus, we all said, amen. Let the church say, amen. Let the church say, amen. Let us go uh, to get your Bibles and go to Hebrews. Hebrews, one of these rare moments I get to move throughout Hebrews. Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses 5 uh, through 8, verses 5 through 8. So go ahead and get your Bibles, give you a chance. Hebrews, give Deaconess a chance to put it on the screen. Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses 5 through 8. 5 through 8. Hebrews 13, 5 through 8. 5 through 8. Five through eight. Very good. Thank you, Deaconess Clayton. Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses uh, five through eight. I'll be reading a new international version. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Let me read that again. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Verse six. So say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Verse seven, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Final verse, verse nine, eight. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm going to read that again. You heard that verse your whole life. Now you know where it is. Hebrews uh, 13, chapter, verse nine, eight. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to preach this morning from the subject. I'm going to rock steady with Jesus. 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 Deacon, Deacon Clayton loves the whispers. We were taking a road trip uh, Pre-COVID, I was preaching revival in Gainesville, Georgia, at the First Baptist Church, and I always like to play my iPod on rare road trips. Even when I fly, I play my old iPod. And he said, do you have any whispers on there? One of my favorite songs as growing up uh, as a teenager was the whispers, and the title of that song was Rock Steady, Rock Steady. They singing about a girl, uh, you stole my heart, you were all that I anticipated, I wanted you every part. But I knew that love would be complicated. I began to touch, but you wouldn't let in. It never seemed to be the right time. I started to give up. Look at the whisper say, I started to give up down to the limit. And then you change your mind. Oh, and we began to rock steady. Steady rocking all night long. 
and we begin to rock steady, rocking to the break of dawn. The whistler talked about had a hard time getting with that girl, but when we finally got together, we rocking steady. Somebody type on the screen, rock steady. That means that it was consistent. That means that it, it, it was good. It was great. It, it, it had its stability. All of us want a sense of stability. You want stability on your job. You want stability in retirement. You want stability in your health. You want stability in friendships, relationships. Stability, Dick and Clayton, I'm shouting you out, buddy, shouting you out. Uh, so we want relationship stability. We want health stability. We want financial stability. We want psychological stability. Stability means I got balance. I don't go too far right. I don't go too far left. I live a very high-paced, fast life involving a lot of activities. But I rock. the reason I can rock steady, I take time out to do what I love most, scuba diving, scuba diving, scuba diving. So, 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 so the title of the sermon, I'm going to rock steady with Jesus. I'm going to rock steady with Jesus. We don't know who wrote Hebrews. It is, many, many years ago, theologians attributed to Paul. And then after many years of studying, scholarship and evaluation, it didn't appear that Paul wrote it, but someone close to Paul perhaps wrote it. That debate is still in the air. But Hebrews is an Old Testament book trapped in the New Testament because it has all the trappings and trims of uh, Judaism from the Old Testament. It has a touch of the Torah. It has a touch of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. It has hints and highlights of the Psalms. It has the wisdom of Solomon. It goes to a hall of fame of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David, and Ruth, and Daniel, and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. It's a great book. It is written to the Christians that they may understand that the Jesus that was prophesied, the Messiah in the Old Testament, is that Messiah in the New Testament. So the, the writer of Hebrews comes to this 13th chapter. There are three things that I want you to gather from this sermon this morning. I'm going to rock steady with Jesus. There are three things I want you to uh, to sink and saturate into your very soul, into your very soul. The first one is companionship. Write that. The one way you rock with Jesus is through companionship. Write that. Uh, Kimberly, go find the couple emoji and put it on the screen. A couple, man and a woman. A uh, couple, or man, woman, and child. Couple. Companionship. Somebody type on the screen companionship. We find companionship in verse 5. The end of verse 5. Never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. Verse 5 at the end. Never will I leave you. Companionship. Jesus has promised to stick in there with us. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Jesus has promised to, there you go, Kimberly. Uh, good, good, good. Everybody put up what Kimberly just put in relationship. Companionship. Verse 5. He says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. People stress over money. Money is necessary. Money is important. You can't watch this live stream without money because you have to pay your bill to get the internet or your telephone, your cell phone. Money pays your gas bill, your light bill. Money buys you clothes. Money allows me to get on a plane and, and pay scuba. I don't scuba dive for free. I have to pay to scuba dive. Okay? Money, you have money to buy groceries. He doesn't say don't have money. He said don't love it because if you love it, you'll do anything to get it. If you love it, you will make money your God. Okay? Thou shall have no other gods before me in the first of the Ten Commandments. Greed has ruined many people's lives. He said, be content with what you have. We've got to learn to be content. Paul writes, this is another reason some thought this is Pauline here, because Paul wrote in Philippians, in whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. Be content for this season with the car that you drive. Be content in this season for the house that you live in. Be content in this season for the income that you do have. Why should you be content? As I travel the world, I've met hundreds of people who would love to trade places with Kimberly Miles Cameron, who would love to trade places with Deborah Holliman, who would love to play traces, places with the Claytons, would love to trade places with the Miles, with German. Be content. To be content, I'm not stressed. To be content, I, I, I got more than enough to live off. To be content, I can open the refrigerator. Tell you what, I always pack my snacks because when we dive, we eat fruit, 
We eat something with protein. I pack all of my oatmeal. I pack for breakfast. I pack all of my nutrition bars. I pack my plums and my grapes. Left them on the counter in Atlanta. And didn't realize till I got to the airport Friday morning. So what I did, I took an Uber on Friday over to the Publix here in, in Singer, on Singer Island. And then I walked back for my exercise. I bought new plums, better, because Publix has the best fruit in a grocery store. I bought new nutrition bars. I bought new, um, uh, what, tea to drink. I was content. I didn't stress. When you're content, you won't stress. You see, you see my nutrition bar? You see my nutrition bar? When you're content, you don't stress. When you're content, you don't stress. You see my low sugar oatmeal? When you're content, you don't stress. 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 Look at this big, nice, juicy plum. When you're content, you don't stress. When you're content, you don't stress. When you're content, you don't stress. Look, look at these dice out pears. Dice low sugar pears. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Instead of complaining so much, we need to learn to be content. Somebody write on the screen, no more stress. No more stress. Instead of complaining, we need to learn to be content. Instead of comp be content. He says in verse, verse 5, be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. The reason we have companionship and we can live without being stressed out every day because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I lead you. Leave you. Let me tell you this morning. We have the best companionship because God has never abandoned us. Jeremy, God has never abandoned you. Deborah, God has never abandoned you. Clayton's deacon and deaconess, God has never abandoned you. We've been hurt, but never abandoned by God. We've been misled, but never abandoned by God. Kimberly, because you might mold your master. Get the the uh, stop sign, the one with the, the little line in it, puts that stop sign and no more stress. No more stress. Let me go to the live stream and see can I find it. Uh, God has not abandoned us. Bruised, but not abandoned. Hurt, but not abandoned. Disappointed, but not abandoned. Oh, 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 come on, come on, somebody. Come on. Somebody type on the screen, God has never left me. 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 Oh, here we go. I found it. I, I, I found it. Okay, look at, duplicate my stress emoji that's coming up on the screen. No more stress. No more stress. The reason you don't have to stress because God has, thank you, Kim, has not abandoned us. God has never abandoned us. We've done some cray cray stuff, but God didn't go nowhere. One of my favorite parables by Jesus is the parable of the prodigal son. We're talking about companionship. That boy messed up, went bankrupt. Okay, he wasted all he had. But his daddy was sitting on the front porch waiting for him to come home. Woo! He didn't abandon that boy. I came to tell you through all of our foolishness, God has not forsaken us. Verse 5, never will I leave you. God said, I ain't going nowhere. If you're not connected to God this morning, God ain't the one who moved. You moved. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, ah. If you don't feel connected to God this morning, God didn't go nowhere. God's where he's always been, right there. Companionship. This is the, see, there are different kinds of companionship. You have a companionship with your husband or your wife. You have a companionship with your children. You have a companionship with coworkers. You have a companionship with friends, family. But here, this is a spiritual companionship. Somebody put on the screen spiritual companionship. Spiritual companionship, I'm connected to God. God is with me. He says, never will I leave you. I ain't going nowhere. I'm here for the long haul. Ooh, 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 ooh. God says, I'm here for the long haul. I ain't going nowhere. Guess what? If somebody moved, it wasn't God. <laughs> 
That's right, devil. God has never abandoned you. He said, no, I'm not. I will never forsake you. The reason he says, don't love money, because I'm going to supply your needs. To forsake means to abandon. God says, I'm not going to abandon you. God says, if you believe me, I'm going to feed you. If you believe me, you're going to have the clothes. If you believe me, you're going to get the job. If you believe me, you're going to have a roof over your head. If you believe me, I will let you see miracles of healing. I will heal you from cancer. I will reverse that diabetes. I will get that high blood pressure under control. I will not forsake you. I will not forsake you. There are people who forsake their children. They abandon their children. There are people who quit a job. There are people who disappear and you never hear from them again. But God doesn't do that. God says, I will not forsake you. Uh, you know that old song I used to love? Down through the years, the Lord has been good to me. If you look at God's track record, you will find out that God has never left you nor forsaken you. Oh, God has a perfect track record. Guess what? God, doesn't, God is not in arrears on child support. God doesn't owe any back child support. Kimberly, I'm your dad and I owe child support. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've been making Uncle John my I'll pay the child support I should have been paying. God is not delinquent in his child support. Has not forsaken. Even when we didn't deserve it, he didn't forsake us. Even when we got off track, he did not forsake us. E e even when we messed up, he did not forsake us. Part says companionship. When I'm lonely, I need God's companionship. When I'm hurting, I need God's companionship. When I'm uncertain, I need God's companionship. When I'm riddled with doubt, I need God's companionship. When I don't understand life, when things are inexplicable, I need God's companionship. When I'm losing it, I need God's companionship. I need him to hear, hear him say, Lo, I'm with you always. Can anybody raise their hand if you know for a fact, if you know that you know that he never left you? Hold your hand up. So the first thing that we have when we rock steady, when we rock steady with Jesus, remember the title of the sermon, I'm rocking steady with Jesus. Oh, thank you, Deacon S. Clay. My hands are up. Thank you, Kimberly. The title of the sermon, I'm rocking steady with Jesus. So the first, the first way we rock steady with Jesus is through companionship. The second way we rock steady with Jesus is through commitment. Write that on the screen, Deacon S. Clay. Commitment. Verse 6. Look at verse 6. So say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Ooh, ooh, let me get this air conditioner because I'm burning up now. Uh, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. The Lord is my helper. Look at this. Whoever writes Hebrews, we don't know if it's Paul or one of his assistants. Uh, he says, verse number six, so with confidence. The Lord is my help. I will say the Lord is my helper. So we, so we say the church, the believer, the born again child of God. We here is the believer. We here is the born again child of God. We here of those who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. Deacon, that's Clayton. I don't know if they said it in Enfield, but Dr. Hightower used to laugh about it because they said it down in where he was from and they said it where I was from down in Washington, Georgia. The Lord done hope me. The Lord done hope me. I wish Timothy Lee was here this morning. The Lord done hope me. Translation in English, the Lord has helped me. Samuel, hitherto have the Lord helped us. Look at this, look at this. Say with confidence, you need to be confident this morning, Kim, that the Lord is your helper. Deborah, you need to be confident this morning that the Lord is your helper. Jarman, with the death of your brother, you need to be confident this morning that the Lord is your helper. Deacon Clayton, you need to be confident that the Lord is your helper. When we lose our way, be confident that the Lord is our helper. When life is tough and terse and tense, we need to be able to say the Lord is our helper. When disease strikes the body, when the disease strikes the body, we need to know that the Lord is our helper. Deacon S. Clayton, y'all remember when I was sick and almost died I almost lost my mind in 2013. Look at me now 
in 2023, 10 years after I was very, very sick and they couldn't initially find out what was wrong with me and my medicine made me suicidal, I can testify with confidence, the Lord is my helper. Is anybody in this church this morning besides me that can testify that the Lord is your helper? Is there any believer watching this live stream? Mother Gaddis, can you testify that the Lord is your helper? Jarman, can you testify that the Lord is your helper? Oh yeah, Deacon S. Clay, they were saying that in the country bring uh, brought me from a mighty long way. Just think about it. ten years ago, I didn't even think about scuba diving. <laughs> look at this. Look at look at me scuba diving. Jarman, it was so good to see another black man on that boat yesterday. I, I was the only black person on the whole boat. So when I looked up and I saw him and he saw me, we went. <laughs> We didn't have to say that. Our laughter told the story. Good to see another brother. Then found out he was a member of my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. So, 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 is anybody besides me, Deacon Clayton, can you testify that the Lord, and with confidence, he's your helper? When I'm sick, he's my helper. When I need financial resources, he's my helper. When I need decision, I was ministering to someone right here yesterday. I said, look, just ask the Lord to guide you. He's my helper. How many of you have been in a bad place and the Lord helped you out of that bad place? How many of you had to go through a storm and the Lord helped you through that storm? How many of you have lost your way? How many of you, like me, sometimes out of your own foolishness in the past, you you did the dumb dumb? My grandma said, come here, dumb dumb. You, you, but the Lord helped you. He helped you. There are some situations. So we're talking about... <laughs> There are some situations that we can't get out of, but he can help me. But why do I call this commitment? Because the Lord is committed to helping me. Look, he said, we will say, come the Lord's name. God is committed to you, Kimberly. God is committed to you, Uncle John. God is committed to you, Miss Janie. God is committed to you, Miss Lavinia. God is committed to you, Deacon Clayton, Jarvin, Deborah. He's committed. Thelma Jackson, I think I saw you. He's committed. Somebody needs to understand that God has made a commitment to you. When you sign a loan, you committing to pay it back at the bank. When you sign a mortgage, you committing to pay. When you sign a car note, commit to pay. Oh, it feels so good not to have no car note. When you sign a loan, you commit to pay. Germans say all in. When you when you when you but when you charge someone your credit charge card or your credit card, you committing to pay it off. When you purchase an airline ticket, you committed to fly. When you put gas in your car, you committed to drive. God is committed to helping us. Does that am I helping anybody today? It, 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 does that make sense to anybody today that God has made a commitment because it says, I shall say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I don't care how strong your faith is, you need still need help from God. I don't care how smart we are, we still need help from God. I don't care how many victories we have had, we still have need help from God. All of my consulting, I pray about every client. I've been praying out here in Florida because I got three, four, I got four deals on the table in Atlanta. Got a call yesterday from one of my employees. Um, let me know that the Zoom calls while I was flying, three Zoom calls went well. About to wrap a deal in East Point. I pray. I asked the Lord to help me. I asked God to move on the city council to vote for my stuff. I asked God to move on the planning and zone department heads and the engineers and the planners to improve my stuff. I asked God for help. I'm a pastor. I asked God for help. I'm Dr. Walker. I ask God for help. I'm a country boy living in the city, but I ask God for help. I never get on an airplane without asking God for help for me and everybody else who's flying that day. Hello, Deacon S. Otis. Deacon S. Otis, it was great to speak to you on the phone the other day. Deacon, Otis, Deacon S. Otis, I told my uncle the good news. So, so listen, listen, listen. Open your mouth and ask God for help. My grandma said, well, open your mouth. I ain't no mind reader. Look at this. We... we we're talking about commitment. God is committed to helping you. God is committed to giving you a better life. God is committed to making your dreams come true. God is, 
interested and committed to making his plan come to fruition in your life. I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. Plans to prosper you, not to hurt you. Deaconess Clinton, you throw me off every time you call her Deaconess Allen because I never paid attention to that until you said on the way to, to Elberton. Now he says, this commitment says, he's my helper. And because he's my helper, look at what the, the writer says, semicolon. The Lord is my helper, semicolon. I will not be afraid. I, I, when I was a little boy, I was scared of the dark. My grandma said, that boy, we're going to have to turn that lamp off because that, that light ran up the gas bill. I mean, ran up the light bill. That light ran up the light bill. She said, ain't nothing in the dark. I was scared of the boogeyman. I was scared that something would come out the closet and get me. So one, one night, my grandmother stayed in there with me until I fell asleep. Because of my grandmother's presence, I was no longer afraid of the dark. Because of God's presence, I ain't scared no more. I'm going to show you the emoji I want you to put on the screen for I'm not, not scared anymore. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Give me a second. Give me a second. And then I want y'all to put it up there right after me. I want y'all to put it up there right after me. Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Here we go. Okay, duplicate that emoji that's coming on the screen. Here, it should be popping up soon. No more ghosts. Some of the ghosts are in our heads. Some of the ghosts are in our minds. Some of the ghosts are in our spirit. Psychiatrists say 90% 90, 90 of our fears are never realized. It's a mind game. The, the, the writer of Hebrews says, so we say we come as the Lord is my helper. Not and, but, but semicolon, because it all goes there. Thank you, Kim. I will not be afraid. Stop walking on eggshells, Kim. Stop being shaky, Deborah. He says, I will not be afraid. Go ahead and start the business. Do not be afraid. Go ahead and apply for the loan. Do not be afraid. Go ahead and go back to school. Do not be afraid. Go ahead and take a chance and get married. Do not be afraid. Go ahead and build it. The Bible says, I mean, the, the people say if you build it, they will come. Go ahead and hit the reset button on your life. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid to love again. Don't be afraid to venture out. Do not be afraid to try new things. That's why I love scuba diving so much. Yesterday I dove up to 75 feet. Hey, Tanya, Andre and I talked an hour and 11 minutes after the George game. We always debrief after the game. Deacon S. Clay, I ain't heard Hanks in 100 years. My girl, Dignity. No, Hank, you ghost. The ghost emoji. You can use the ghost emoji. I ain't heard of Hanks since I left Washington, Georgia. And then one time with me and um, Dr. Hightower talked about it. You don't have to be afraid. The fears are in your mind. The fears are unrealized. The fears are not legitimate. Some fears are not legitimate. Yesterday, I dove to 73 feet. 73 feet. Didn't even think about it. I, I was so confident. There you go, Deborah. No more Hanks. I was so confident in my ability to dive. I didn't realize that I had gone 73 feet until I looked at my dive computer on my wrist late the next day. You need, you can't operate in fear. You cannot be successful operating in fear. You cannot be successful operating in fear. Get, get the go. Somebody around the screen, get the cobwebs out of your head. Get, I'm going I'm to show you the emoji for that. I'm going to show you the emoji for that. Get the cobwebs out of your head. Get the cobwebs out of your head. Give me just a second. Give me just a second. Give me just a second. Just a second. Look on the screen, you're going to see my emoji. 
See, some of these fears are in your head. That's a, that's no spiders. That means no cobwebs. You got to get the cobwebs out of your head. You can't win if you got cobwebs in your head. You can't succeed if you got cobwebs in your head. You can't make it to the top of the mountain with cobwebs in your head. No more cobwebs. Look at, look at what he says here. Look at what he says. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I can't do it by myself, but I got a commitment from God. <laughs> I cannot figure it out by myself. Oh, excellent, Kim. Kim, you, you are the emoji queen on here. I cannot do it alone, but the Lord is my helper. I can't make it by myself, but the Lord is my helper. He says, we say with confidence. Confidence means I believe it. Let them call you arrogant, but that's confidence. A difference between confidence and arrogance. Arrogance means you think you know it all, you're better than anybody else. But confidence means I believe in the ability that God has given me. Who? I'm rocking steady because I got a commitment from God. First, I rock steady. Why? Was, was the first one? Was the first one? Do y'all remember the first one that I gave you this morning? I rock steady because I got the companionship. Now I'm rocking steady because I got a commitment from God. But look at what he says. He says, the Lord is my help, the semicolon, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Oh, I'm going to mess y'all up. The end of verse number six, that, that commitment from God means that people can't do nothing to me. Look what he says. What can mere mortals do to me? You can threaten me, but you can't touch my soul. Oh, you can lie on me, but I'll bounce back from every lie. You can hate on me, but your hate don't stop nothing here. Ooh, ooh. He says, what can me or more? Some of y'all are afraid of people. Some of y'all are intimidated by, I ain't intimidated by nobody. He says, what can me or more to do? I got a commitment from, from God. So man can't do nothing to you. Woman can't, they can hurt you. They can lie to you. They can drag you through divorce. They can try to take your money. They can scheme and scam, but they can't win in the end. Look at this. He says, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember that God told the devil, you can do everything you want to Job, but don't touch your soul. You know why mere mortals can't do nothing? You know why men can't do nothing? You know why women can't stop you? Because the Bible says, and Paul said it, if God be for me, who can be against me? Ooh. If God be for me, who can be against me? Some of y'all listen to me this morning. Down in the sunshine state of Florida. Some of you listen to me. You live long enough to see God crush your enemies. Ooh! You live long enough to see God put your enemy under your feet. You live long enough to testify with old man King David. Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of my enemy. Do y'all understand that this morning? Do y'all feel me in this morning? If God be for me, who can be against me? Do you realize that a thousand shall flee from you? That's in the Bible. Some of you have outlived your enemies. Some of you have outfought your enemies. <laughs> Some of you have outflanked your enemies. You see, what, what your enemy forgot was that God made a commitment to stick with you. When somebody messes with you as a child of God, they mess with God at the same time. Ooh. Somebody type on the screen, hands off. Come on, somebody type on the screen, hands off. Touch not thine mind anointed. See, we messed up and thought that God was only saying, don't mess with my preachers, my pastors, my evangelists, my missionaries. No, 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 no. Every child of God is anointed for some work in the kingdom. So get your hands off of God's children. Dean, that's clear. Did they say in the interview, chilling? Hands off, German. <laughs> Kimberly, hands up. I need just three of y'all to type on the screen. God is with me. I got a commitment. You can't mess with me because I'm too tight with God. You can't mess with me because I'm too tight with God. You cannot defeat me because I'm too tight with God. You cannot throw me off because I'm too tight with God. <laughs> the not only am I on the Lord's side, the Lord is on my side. Ah! Oh, oh. 
Not only am I on the Lord's side, the Lord's on my side. So the first thing that we see this morning in verse number five, because God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That, 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 that Santarvis, I'm in your state. Uh, Pastor Santarvis Brown, I'm in your state. I'm down in uh, Singer Island. I'm scuba diving. I was diving yesterday in Singer Island. I'm diving today. I did an afternoon dive. My first afternoon dive will be at 1.30 because I want to live stream. You need to understand that God, West Palm, Singer Island, God has made a commitment to never leave us nor forsake us. But, but, but we, we, we have this companionship. You can't bother me without bothering God. <laughs> hey, frat, you like this shirt? In fact, I met a brother on the boat yesterday, a, a black brother and an alpha brother. Listen, listen, people better be hands off with you. If you mess with me, you messing with God. If you curse me, you're cursing God. If you hate me, you're hating God because I belong to him. Look at what he said. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I can't do it by myself, but I don't have to do it by myself because the Lord is my helper. I can't climb that mountain by myself, but I don't have to because the Lord is my helper. And, and while I will have detractors, you're going to have detractors. You're going to have clowns. Clowns will clown. Haters will hate. And idiots will be idiots. But he says here at the end of verse number six, what can mere mortals do to me? I want it to sink and saturate and sear into your soul that if God be for you, nobody can be against you. Somebody right on the screen, I cannot be defeated. Come on, put that on the screen. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be defeated. So the first thing we see in verse number five, uh, never will I leave you. Know, he had, we have commitment. We see in verse number six, so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. We have companionship. Oh, but the last, oh, Cameron, I cannot be defeated. Uh, Clayton, I cannot be defeated. The last thing that we have, German, I cannot be defeated. The last thing that we have is we have consistency. Put that on the screen, Deacon S. Clayton, consistency. Here's the consistency. Verse number eight, go to verse number eight, go to consistency. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Now, it's important to understand the connecting conjunctions of and. It does not say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday but today and or possibly tomorrow. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today. Remember, how many of you have dealt with inconsistent folk? How many pastors have dealt with inconsistent members? How many doctors have dealt with inconsistent patients? You give the patient a regimen to follow. They don't follow it. Come back sick as a dog and want to know why the medicine didn't work. Didn't work because you didn't take it. Didn't work because you didn't die and exercise. How many of you, the stock market is inconsistent sometimes. The economy is inconsistent sometimes. Right now, we're praying for the people to, in, in Israel and, and that are under attack in Hamas. We're praying for everybody in all wars. That We're praying for the innocent people in wars in Ukraine and in now Israel. We live in a world that is sometimes inconsistent. People will tell you one thing Thursday, something else Friday, a new thing on Thursday. A new thing on Sunday because they're inconsistent. People's behavior is can be inconsistent. Inconsistent people, Pastor Brown, Dr. Brown, they are irritating. People who are inconsistent get on my nerves. I avoid inconsistent people. You cannot even have a better life unless you're consistent. You can't be here, there, and everywhere and nowhere at the same time. But the, the writer here, he tells us, number one, that we have companionship. Number two, we have commitment. But now he says consistency. The greatest consistency in life is found in Jesus Christ. Because whoever wrote Hebrews, we don't know if it was Paul or one of his understudies, he says his crowning verse here is verse number eight. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Oh, somebody needs to understand the same Jesus that you gave your soul to 20 and 30 years ago. He's the same. The same Jesus who worked miracles, works miracles. The same Jesus who healed, heals. I always tell people, the, the, the people that Jesus healed in, in the Bible, but um, blind Bartimaeus, Drusilla, the one with the issue of blood, 
the lady, um, the lady caught in the act of adultery, the, the paralytic by the pool in John. The Bible doesn't change. The stories don't change, but the characters do. <laughs> Instead of the man by the pool, it's me and you. Instead of by the males, it's me and you. In, 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 instead of, 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 of the lady with the issue of blood, is you and I. Woo! The Bible doesn't change. The characters change. I'm glad that the Jesus who walked on water still walks on water. We have consistency because he says here, he, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus doesn't change. The stock market changes, but Jesus is consistent. The economy changes, but Jesus is consistent. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Somebody ought to be shouting this morning that you, you, you your bank account goes up and down, but Jesus is the same. And look at the three tenses. You know, I'm an English teacher in the past. Look at the look at the look at look at, look at the three tenses. He's the same yesterday. That's the past. Today, that is the present, and tomorrow, that's the future. I have a three tense Jesus. T e n s e. I need three of y'all around the screen. I have a three. The, the number three tense. T e n s t e n s e. Jesus. A three tense Jesus. He covered me. He covers me and he will cover me. <laughs> Dr. Santara, did I hit that? Did I hit those three chances correctly? Dr. Brown, Dr. Brown passes AME Church down in Miami. Dr. Brown, what's the name of your church again? And he's up for college president, so let's keep him in our prayers. The, the three, the three tenths Jesus, the three tenths Jesus, T N S E. Yes, I have a three tenths Jesus. Jesus does, Jesus did, Jesus does, and Jesus will do. Jesus did, Jesus does, Jesus will do. Jesus helped, Jesus helps, Jesus will help. Jesus healed, Jesus heals, Jesus will heal. Jesus fed, Jesus feeds, Jesus will feed. Oh, let's, let's, let's keep Pastor Brown in our prayers. My frat brother in Miami, his church is Greater Mount Pleasant AME Church. Your service must be the 11, Fred. I'm almost done. Listen, listen. Jesus did. Jesus does. Jesus will do. Jesus fixed. Jesus fixes. Jesus will fix. <laughs> Y'all, I'm killing these three tenses. <laughs> Jesus moved. Jesus moves. Jesus will move. Ah, I got a three tenths Jesus. I got a Jesus for yesterday. I got a Jesus for today. And I got a Jesus for tomorrow. I got a three tenths Jesus. I got a Jesus who helped me. I got a Jesus who helps me. I got a Jesus who will help me. I got a Jesus who fed me. I got a Jesus who feeds me. I got a Jesus who will feed me. I have a Jesus who will, 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 who took care of me, who takes care of me, and who will take care of me. Eureka, I got a three-tenths Jesus. <laughs> He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Ooh, I got a three-tenths Jesus. He fixed it. He fixes. He will fix. Oh, I'm rocking steady with Jesus. I'm not rocking by myself, but like the whispers, I'm rocking steady all night long. I got a three -tenths since Jesus, I got three C's in the sermon this morning. I got a commitment from God. Woo! I got companionship from God. And then I got consistency from Jesus. I'm going to close it, close it, close it old school a little bit. Oh, can you say yeah? I got a three tenths Jesus. Jesus did. Jesus does. And Jesus will do. Now notice I began, I opened up the sermon by quoting the lyrics from the whispers, rock steady. I want to close it out with my grandmother. I never will forget it, that one day I fell off my bicycle and I skinned my knee. I fell over the handlebars and I, I, I picked up the bike on the dirt road and I walked to the porch. I was crying and screaming. My grandmother was on the front porch waiting for me because she heard me crying. She came out of the house. She was 
frying some chicken in a cast iron skillet. She took it off the eye and put it on the off eye. She went into her medical cabinet. She got some iodine. She wiped away the blood and she put that iodine on, on my knee. Then she began to blow my knee. Now the blowing didn't do no healing, but it felt so good. That it was cooling off the burn and the sting. And then my grandmother, because I was only eight years old, she picked me up in her arms. She sat me down and she sat in her rocking chair and she began to rock in the rocking chair. The rocking chair went back and forth. The rocking chair didn't move, but she was rocking steady. She rocked away my tears. She walked, rocked away my doubts. She rocked away my fears. And after a while, I fell asleep in her arms. Oh, she put me in the bed. I came to tell somebody, that's why I'm rocking with Jesus. He rocks away my doubts. He rocks away my fears. I'm rocking steady with Jesus. He rocks away my insecurities. He rocks away my doubts. He rocks away my fears. He rocks away my tears. And I fall asleep in his arms. Did not the hymn writer say, safe in the arms of Jesus? I'm rocking with Jesus. I'm not perfect, but I'm rocking steady. I have some hiccups, but I am. I'm rocking steady. In, in the spring, I rock steady. In the fall, I rock steady. In the summer, I rock steady. In the winter, I rock, rock, rock steady. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I'm rocking steady with Jesus Christ. Oh, Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that we have a commitment from you. We thank in the name of Jesus that we have companionship with you. And we thank in the name of Jesus that we have consistency with you. You're the same yesterday. You're the same today. And you're the same forevermore. Thank you that we're rocking steady with Jesus. In your name we said, amen. Amen. Were you blessed by God's word this morning? Were you blessed this morning? Were you transformed this morning? I bet when you hear the whispers, rock steady, you'll think about this. I bet the next time you see a rocking chair in a commercial, you'll think about rocking steady. Have no fear, temple of faith. Have no fear, temple of faith. Because Hebrews 13, 5 through 8 teaches us that we have companionship with Jesus. That we have a commitment from Jesus. And we have consistency with Jesus. Father God, bless every giver this morning. Bless every tither. Bless those who will give offerings. In Jesus' name, restore what they give. Amen. There are three ways in which you can give this morning. The first way you can give is go to the Cash App. Cash App Augustus Ministries. Cash App Augustus Ministries. Second way you can give, go to the church website, www.templeoffaithbiblechurch.org, online giving, PayPal. Uh, the last way you can give, go to the church Giveify app, Temple of Faith Bible Church. Dr. Brown, you're a pastor and you want to give to our church, I'm humble. Dr. Brown, you can go to Cash App Augustus Ministries. Deaconess Clayton, put that up on the screen for him. Uh, she just put it up, uh, Dr. Brown. She just put it up. Cash App, she doesn't she have a Cash App up there. Cash App, there it is. Let me see. Uh, let me scroll up. Ca there it is, Dr. Brown. Look under Deaconess Clayton's uh, post. Three ways to give. Temple of Faith on Giveify, Cash App, Augustus Ministries, and then give, um, you got it, very good. Thank, thank you, Pastor. Y'all thank Dr. Brown for me. Give a hand clap to him. He's a pastor, and he gave in our worship today. That's monumental, monumental. Look, Dr. Brown, if you come to um, Chicago for the Constitutional Convention in July for the fraternity, lunch is on me, lunch is on me, lunch is on me, lunch is on me. Lunch is on me. That's right. Rock steady with Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Will you bless this? Before we go, will you bless this morning? Will you bless this morning? Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Thank you, Deaconess. Deaconess, thank you so much. There are, uh, there are, here are announcements. Uh, Wednesday night, meet me. We continue our rain series in Bible study. Meet me. I'll be back in Atlanta on Monday. Meet me. Uh, Wednesday night, 
for a wonderful Wednesday night Bible study. Wonderful Wednesday night Bible study. Wonderful Wednesday night Bible study. And then on um, Friday morning, Fresh Friday prayer call. Remember on Thursday, wherever you are, stop at 1 o'clock. And pray for German as he will be in Southfield, Michigan to um, for his brother's funeral. His brother's home going celebrate. Friday at 1 o'clock, stop where you are and pray for German and his entire family in Southfield, Michigan. German, have you left for Detroit yet or are you still in, in uh, Atlanta? Then on Saturday, Street Ministry, 11 a.m., the Claytons will be handling street ministry for us. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. street ministry. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Then, of course, next Sunday we'll be right back here. I want to thank all the worshipers. Thank you. Leaving Wednesday. We're going to go home with Oh How I Love Jesus. Everybody praying for Jeremy. He leaves Wednesday. Prayer for German. Let's pray for German. Father God, in the name of Jesus, give German traveling grace to Detroit and back to Atlanta. Bless his family as they prepare for the homegoing celebration. Bless Dr. Brown. Let him have a very, very on fire worship service at his great church down in Miami. And God, give him the college presidency that you want him to have at the time and the day you want him to have it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go home old school. May the Lord, may the Lord wash between me and thee while we're absent from another. Who am I going to get to say good afternoon to? Eureka, thank you for watching down in Macon. Thank you, Dr. Brown down in Miami. Thank you, Kimberly in Austell. Thank you, Deborah in Milwaukee. Thank you so much. Who am I going to get to say good afternoon? Deaconess, not Deaconess, uh, Deaconess Allison, thank you for watching in Overton, Georgia. Mother Gaddis, thank you for watching the replay on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Oh, how I love Jesus. We're going to go home with that. Kimmy, thank you, darling. Thank you for being a great virtual host, Deaconess Clayton.